Hey guys, how are you doing? How everybody is doing around the world? This is Danish. I'm back with our another free community session. And today we have an incredible guest from, uh, from Estonia, Tunis from One Office. And I will give a more introduction, but quickly uh, want to introduce some community resources for you guys so you can get you know benefit out of them. So I'm quickly going to share my screen and show you and also give a shout out uh, to the supporter of our community webinars. So the number one supporter is Visa DVD. It was me. Yay. Ooh. <laughs> so it's actually a, it's a marketplace to hire global relocation, immigration, or company formation, or tax experts, including Tunis. So yes. you can yeah, you can browse the services here. You can click on any service you want. And then you can, you know, click chat to start chatting with them. You can also find Tunis and other service providers. Uh, plus, you can also browse the available visas. It's all free. Don't have to pay anything. Nada, no sign up walls, nothing. Just go ahead, check it out, and relocate and never stop traveling. <laughs> Second, a quick shout out to Safety Wing. They love our community and they love, uh, you know, to support our community webinars. And so check them out. They have an incredible insurance products. They are actually the cheapest insurance products they have. You know, they're mixed reviews, but uh, I'm using it. Most of the community are enjoying their products. Use them, connect, uh, message me if you need more help or something. So that was community resources. Let me turn this off and get back to Tony. So I'm uh, Tony. Uh, we I'm really grateful, and I want to show my gratitude on the behalf of 150,000 digital nomads who are not here, but they all want to say thank you for coming up today. Absolutely, uh, it's insane what kind of audience have you gathered here, and 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 just um, just the fact that people are moving around uh, plus COVID, which helps actually promote the residency in Estonia so much. So happy to go into the details. Uh, yeah. I already see some polls happening here. So glad to see the activity. Yeah. Really fun to be here. So let's go into yeah. it. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, let's. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. So let's dive straight in. So why Estonia? Because Estonia, whenever digital nomads, digital nomadism comes, remote worker comes, this term comes in, Estonia and e-residency comes along with that. Mm -hmm. Number one question, what is e-residency and why Estonia? What is Estonia? Mm -hmm. Well, Estonia just has this uh, well-developed digital environment where you have so many different services in the cloud, in the internet. And one of those services is uh, business registry, uh, which means that uh, locals here in Estonia can really easily access the uh, business registry of Est Estonia just with their ID card. And then in 2014, the idea developed that why not give access to foreigners to this digital environment? Because they can just register their business, do their remote work, uh, have clients in EU, in other countries around the world. They have this legal entity, this uh, body that can invoice, hire, and so on and so on. So that was the idea because from Estonian perspective, it's kind of um, easy money. The infrastructure is already there. So just get the businesses here to Estonia, let them do their business outside of Estonia. What we in Estonia collect, the government uh, thinking behind it, is the dividend money. So if you pay out dividends, you pay a corporate tax in Estonia, and that's the income of Estonia in that sure. sense. And I, I'll, I'll go into tax details sure. more later, yeah. but yeah, that's yeah. the gist of it. Wow. Okay. So I will also ask you at the end if we get some time left about the Estonian Estonian as a country as well, because I've been there. I I love Estonia. An incredible, incredible country, small country, good food. So let me ask you, so e-residency, what is e-residency if I ask you? Is it a visa? Is it a nationality? What is it? <laughs> yeah, um, it's a difficult concept uh, and, and it is like an abstract concept uh, because there's nothing like this around the world. Uh, but what it essentially is, is a digital identity, uh, which you are writing yourself into an Estonian environment. Um, you, sure. you have your name and then we assign a digital code with your name. And with this name and the code, you can access Estonian services, digital services. So it's just the means to access Estonian systems. For example, you can also access library, libraries, uh, population registry and so on and so on. 
but wow. the utility the utility of this um, identity card that you receive is to actually register the business so in that okay. sense it's a valid question that uh, you are not getting any like a permanent residence here or any grant to actually stay here or a visa because often we get those kind of questions uh, that uh, a foreigner, non-EU resident, just applies for EU residency and thinks that maybe I can get into EU or into Estonia with this. It yeah. gives you nice grounds if you open a business yeah. and you have this e-residency card, but yeah. it's not just a travel sure. document. You 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 cannot okay. get like a tax residency or just a residency in Estonia with the okay. residency. It's a tool to access business registry and to manage your business in Estonia, which by the way can trade across the border outside of Estonia. Sure. So what I understood to summarize is a digital identity. It's a tool to register a business in Europe, means in Estonia, without visiting. It's 100% yeah. remote. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, when you have this identity card, basically it looks like this. Well, this is our oh, national yeah. identity card. Go look yeah. at the details. But it yeah. has this chip here. Uh, sure. So, uh, if you apply for e-residence, you get a card reader, a little bit newer one, fancier one, and you get the yeah. card with the I, uh, PIN codes. And then mm -hmm. you insert everything into your PC and, and log in, register your company, register uh, your company name, your business, uh, you start invoicing, you, you just register your business. But first, you, you actually need to get this identity sure. card, which is actually kind of funny that everything in Estonia is really easy. Getting the card is the hardest part because yes. you have to physically go and pick it up from the pickup location because they sure. will give you biometrics, uh, your um, uh, fingerprint, uh, your name, your signature, everything is there. Uh, and, and that's actually a key point because you want this system to be secure. If you sure. establish a company in Estonia, and this is the way you identify that you are the owner of the company in Estonia, then mm -hmm. Estonian current essentially gives a guarantee that this business that has been established by a foreigner in Estonia is valid, it's trustworthy, uh, you can do business with this uh, Estonian company. And this gives you this sure. insurance, it's encrypted sure. and so on. Yeah. So I will dive into the process right now, how to apply for it. We will, guys, don't ask, don't worry, we will ask more detailed questions about taxes and all that but we are just covering the basics. So it's a digital identity which allows anyone from anywhere in the world to open a company in Estonia and start issuing invoices to their clients, regardless of wherever they are from, doesn't matter. So that part is clear. Now to apply that, what is the eligibility or what are the requirements? I know you mentioned that it's, uh, it's, there is a hard part of it, but if we just bullet point it, what are the requirements mm -hmm. to get this e-residency? Well, there is essentially the only one requirement. You have to have your own, uh, you have to have a valid passport. Or if you're oh. EU uh, resident uh, citizen, then you can also use like European identity card. Because oh. when you apply for Estonian e-residency, again, you have to prove that you're the person who you are. So you need documents. Passport yes. is a sure way to do that. Uh, but wow. on the government side, at the moment, there is no restriction uh, with a small caveat, um, but not go not going into that. There are a few countries that are yes. uh, restricted at the moment of getting the e-residency card. Uh, mm -hmm. These are Russia and Belarus, uh, but all other countries are free. Or if you're from another country, you are free to apply for the e-residency card. And usually they also approve the application. Well, they have one question in this application form. It's really easy form. Uh, you can ask service providers of, of help, uh, one office for help if you need. But essentially, just be honest when you apply. But there is one question that they ask. Why are you applying for e-residency card? And there are uh, different people uh, answer differently. But what you should answer is that I'm planning uh, to establish a business in Estonia. So sometimes uh, people are just fans of the system. That's also like a great thing, why do you apply for e-residency? But to be accepted for e-residency program, uh, you, your end goal should be establishing a business in Estonia. With, and with your audience, I think it's a given. So if you're listening yeah. in, you're probably thinking of establishing a business here. So you shouldn't have any problems with the application. There are some details like, again, where you're from and so on, but it's so generic uh, and just 
Playing, okay. playing KYC is well, that you see in so, so to summarize again, so we just need a passport, which I'm sure most of us have, and that's actually we use. So passport, only having a passport is a great requirement. So next up would be having a passport, go on the student government website, fill out a form, and then I have to go to a pickup location. Are those pickup locations everywhere, or how does the process work? Uh, I'll send uh, you also the um, link that refers to the pickup locations, but uh, it's not in all places. Uh, by heart, I don't know where is your main of your audience, yeah, but uh, yeah. in most big European cities, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, capital cities, you have the pickup locations. So Berlin, Paris, Rome, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, when we are talking about like non-EU, then you have Washington, New York, uh, San Francisco. Uh, then in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, uh, then Johannesburg in uh, South Africa, Australia, you have, I think it's Canberra, but maybe it's Sydney, um, I might be mistaken. But point okay. being is that all the regions are covered. And yeah. it's a valid question again, because the most difficult part is actually getting the card, the physical card. But you might be from Sri Lanka and then you have to uh, travel to New Delhi. Who knows what are the travel restrictions and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. I saw the poll you had here that people who are uh, interested of starting their e-residency journey in the next three months or in the next six months, well, I recommend starting it now because you apply for the card, it arrives in the pickup location, and then you have enough time to actually in three months or six months to pick it up to make sure. your travel plans and so on. Yeah. Because otherwise you, you just might get it in the embassy and then it turns out that, whoa, I don't have any way to travel at the moment. Yeah. It's gonna be a problematic. Start the journey now. Sure. Yeah, so guys, great advice from Tony. Start journey now. Contact Tony if you need help. Yeah. But, so yeah. you 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 apply this and then you go to pick up a location and you get this digital identity. You are now a e resident, and now you can open a company in Estonia. How long does it take after getting e residency to open a company? <laughs> yeah. Really good, really good. I I like to answer this question all the time. Uh, it's maximum twenty four hours. Uh, so um, once you've been, you come through the act, difficult process of getting the identity card, getting your tool to access Estonian systems. After that, it's everything is so fast, including mm -hmm. establishing the business. So that's why I recommend applying already now because the e-residency card is uh, um, it's valid for five years, and it doesn't have any costs of owning it. You just have it. And whenever you have the idea, that, oh, okay, now is the correct time to issue an invoice. Well, you can go into one of his uh, web page, open the business in 24 hours, and then tomorrow already issue your first invoice with an Estonian company. So wow. in that sense, like it's really fast. And um, and again, that's why you have service providers with e-residency uh, program who actually guide you through the system. Uh, uh, they would write the details to right places. So the application would be approved in 24 hours. So you wouldn't have any hiccups that, I don't know, this name is already taken and you, you cannot, yeah. you have to choose another name and so on, or, yeah. or your, I don't know, some details were too uh, generic, please specify. Well, we do all of that work for you. So you get the guarantee that in 24 hours, your business has been established in Estonia. Wow. And then, can I apply, let's say most of my people, they are entrepreneurs online, digital, like on running online businesses. So let me give you a use case sure. scenario. So, you know, someone from Toronto, that's where I'm from. So someone from Toronto, he wants to become a digital nomad. Now he has a business. He left Canada. He's roaming around. He cannot go back and forth to Canada. So he noticed e-residency is a good solution. He can manage a company remotely. He get the ID. He get this company. Now he has to register for the bank account. Do mm -hmm. ha he has to travel to Estonia to open a bank account? Uh, well, um, legally, when we talk about actually legally, what's with the, going on with the bank accounts, it's that an Estonian company doesn't have, there's no law that the Estonian company has to own a bank account, oh. which in turn means that your business can be fully on cash, which is impossible. But it also means that the um, owner of the company is free to choose whatever banking solution they can get their hands to. So there are some widely known banking solutions you can apply for, including some in Estonia. 
Uh, but if you apply for a traditional bank account where you have like leases and, and uh, I don't know, you, you get insurances, you get uh, you have the availability for a loan and so on. Those are traditional banks and they definitely need some kind of physical verification. So a traveling to Estonia is needed. Uh, that's why we minimize them. Their fees are high. It's not uh, maybe that modern anymore. Uh, and we always recommend online banks, fintech solutions like Wise, Pioneer, uh, Basira, N26, Revolut, whatever, you've heard all of them. So, uh, yeah, yeah that, sure. that's the solutions that actually residents use. And now mm -hmm. you have real businesses where you maybe have actual physical assets. Uh, well, if you have those physical assets in Estonia, then yes, you are also eligible for an Estonian bank account. And then you can maybe expand, get investments or loans from the bank and so on. But that's, that's like a next step. We just sure. recommend if you're a freelancer, get an online fintech solution like WISE and use that mm -hmm. because the fees are nice. You have yeah. so many currencies that are available. You don't have to worry about the currency fluctuation. Just keep the currency whatever you want. Sure. And it's also convenient for your customers because they can just yeah. pay in whatever currency. They Absolutely. Want. I think WISE, I'm using WISE for my companies yeah. as well. So WISE is a go-to solutions for mm -hmm. us, digital nomads less pain so now we have a e-residency which is which requires a passport just a passport to apply and it takes few a few weeks of course to get it second you get open a company with your help within 24 hours bank account we don't need to visit it's also remote with voice so now we are set up we can charge customers and we can make money the my next question would be the taxes so mm -hmm. if i have estonian business as a e-resident do I have to pay taxes on any dollar I am making? No, uh, that's again an advantage that Estonia has is that your profits that you make are yours. So, or actually it's companies. So whatever profit your business is making, deducting the expenses and so on, if you keep it in the company's bank account, you accumulate the profit for years, for years and years and years or whatever is your idea. Uh, if you just keep it in the bank account or reinvest it, it's all under company name. It's basically company's assets and it's tax free essentially um, oh. because Estonia has a law where you pay uh, corporate tax or actually dividend tax only when you take out the profit. Uh, so let's say a usual life cycle of our clients is that they establish the business, let's say today, then in, yeah. within the first year, they maybe make some profit, but they uh, decide to keep the company to just be invested or, or expand the business. And then at the end of the next year, uh, then they take out the profits and then they pay 20% income tax or dividend tax. Oh. And we, we, okay. what it means is that each year you're not paying the corporate tax, this 20%, you, you get that to keep it to expand your business, to invest into your business. Yeah. And, and that's like, a, if you know, compound interest, then it really accumulates within uh, within a few years, you already are actually compared to some other jurisdictions, it's like a really massive bonus. And uh, yeah. for Estonians, the system has been in place for 20 years already and nobody wants to change it because we all <laughs> know how difficult it is to actually start up your business. And if every yeah. year somebody takes 20% of that profit, well, that's a yeah. shame. In Estonia, yeah. we only take your profit uh, or the tax uh, on that profit only if you decide to take it out for yourself as a company holder. Yeah. So Our shareholders. Yeah. yeah. This is this this is actually pretty awesome because if I make hundred thousand dollars this year and keep it in the company and next year I don't make any money, I can still pay the salaries and it's all you know, I, yeah. I still pay the expenses from yeah. that money. So that that really helps. And One more thing so, that uh, uh, recently, a lot of people do is, of course, uh, investment has gone crazy. There's so many, there's so much liquidity out there. Uh, so people uh, or company owners in Estonia, especially residents, they invest into different vehicles. May they be like cryptocurrencies or or just stocks or maybe even other companies like via SPVs. Well, you can do all of that with your Estonian company because there's another detail with the Estonian uh, jurisdiction is that your business, whenever uh, you are registering it, you, you assign a main activity to the business, but you also are allowed to do other activities that are not connected with the main activity at all. So if you're like a um, freelancer marketing person, you can start doing real estate with the same business, which means that you can freely invest into real estate with your profits if you want to, or you can put your own owner's money into the business 
and invest into real estate, although your main activity is uh, market marketing, for example. Wow. This yes. Is, I, I didn't know that. This is brilliant. <laughs> and, and you know, it's so crazy. I try to work from time to time. If I'm not home, then you see this uh, vans that have, we are doing bookkeeping, construction, uh, I don't know, marketing, uh, whatever. It's all, all in the same uh, umbrella or under the same umbrella. So again, Estonian companies are really flexible. If they see yeah. a business opportunity, they jump on it and you don't have to like notify the government saying that, Hey, I, I changed my business activity. Just start doing it. And next year you report on that business that, uh, what, mm -hmm. what you did with your business actually. Wow. This is, this is incredible. So I can register one business and I can do many activities or many, I can offer as a freelancer, software development, marketing, you know, like any kind of service. No problem. Yeah, it's, it's really insane that uh, this uh, works this way because I know many, many jurisdictions where you have to put a tax registration basically on your business. And yeah. what's written in that tax registration is that you're a construction business. And now that's yeah. the only thing that you are allowed to do. It's not the yeah. way in Estonia. Yeah. In Poland, I have a company, so I can understand what you're talking about. I have to put the code, activity code everywhere. So that's, that's good to hear. Uh, we have also questions uh, from Kristen, which I will ask you in a second. Um, mm -hmm. Just one thing I want to ask you. So there is no taxes on anything I am making, but can I pay myself as an employee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so um, to be super uh, clear about the taxation is that uh, this is what Estonia does. The dividend taxation. When you take out dividends, you pay 20% to Estonia. But what you have to consider is that if, um, well, it depends on your situation. If you're a digital nomad traveling all around the world and you don't have an effective tax residency, well, you are a lucky one. You don't basically pay any uh, personal taxes anywhere. Even if you yeah. receive a salary from your Estonian yeah. company, well, you don't have a tax residency. So where are you reporting on that salary? Yeah. Where are you paying your social security taxes? Basically yeah. not in no country, but if uh, quite often we still have situations where it's a German guy living in Germany and they take out salaries every month yeah. from an Estonian company. Uh, well, this German is using the um, social um, services of Germany in Germany. So those taxes should be paid also in Germany. So Estonia sure. doesn't take that tax, but yeah. if you want to uh, get like an official salary from an Estonian company living in Germany, then you should declare your salary taxes in Germany. How that works exactly is beyond me, but I know clients uh, who, who actually employ themselves in another country under Estonian business. So it's, yeah. it's really common that, I don't know, a Finnish guy sure. uh, having an Estonian company is an employee, employee in his own company in Finland mm -hmm. and pays Finland social security taxes. Yes, yeah, so totally understand. So mm -hmm. I think you have answered Christian question. Let me, let me uh, emphasize more on it. So there are two type of taxes. One is a, a business tax, where which is zero if you are a e-residency company, zero business tax, you're not paying any tax. Then you have a personal income tax. So Estonia have no business in your personal income tax if you are not Estonian, of course. Yeah, exactly. foreigner. <laughs> so if you are a Christian from the US or Canada or from any country except Estonia, then you are not paying any personal income taxes in Estonia because you are not a tax resident in Estonia, right? Yeah, you correct. Just, yeah, yeah. You just have to pay this taxes, personal taxes, to your national, like your citizenship or where you are a resident. Um, yeah. So that's where you have to pay the hack, which Stone is also mentioned, which I also fall into that category that I'm not. I'm just roaming around. So I'm not really a tax resident. So I'm a lucky one. So we don't have a personal income tax and with business, there is no business tax as well. So Tonis, we are in heaven, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, uh, if you're in a situation uh, where you don't have any tax residency, you, then really you are the luckiest one. Of course, then you have to have an insurance from like a private broker, uh, yeah. because usually like governments cover your health insurance and stuff. That's yeah. why you pay yeah. those uh, social security taxes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're living in any country, look just look into your own country's legislation and uh, and uh, see how you can employ yourself for a foreign company. Because uh, yes. Estonian company can employ anyone around the world. You just have to do yeah. the local compliance and then pay uh -huh. those taxes accordingly uh, to get wow. the social security. Security. That's 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 incredible. So I will ask Charlie's question. Is it more expensive to register a company in Estonia if I am not a resident? <laughs> Uh, well, it's it's a bit more 
uh, like complex or, or expensive, and, uh, and but it can be done because we were already in the business uh, 12 years ago, where and then there was no e-residency card. Then we opened businesses uh, via power of attorney. So you just sign off on the papers that I can represent you here in Estonia to open a company. Uh, so that just costs extra, like 300 euros extra, uh, but you can do it. So. Uh, a really common situation what we have is that uh, a client wants a business like quite quickly. Uh, then uh, we do it via power of attorney because getting the e-residency card might take a month. With power of attorney, we can do maybe in, in two weeks. And then okay. when you finally get your e-residency card, it actually automatically links with the business already because your name and your ID code, everything is in the system. And then you can manage your business with this ID card, e-residency card. And one more thing about it is that it's more expensive to open a company without e-residency card, but definitely in long term, apply for the e-residency card because you wanna maybe do some changes with the business, add investors, change the board, change the company name, uh, submit your declarations, uh, submit annual reports, whatever. It's all easier easier done uh, with e-residency card. Sure. Yeah, but that's the point. I think Charlie, it will, it will reduce complexity. I understand your point yeah. that it takes some long time at the start, but as Tonis mentioned, run the parallel, give a power of attorney to a company like uh, my one office and apply the ID as well. So in the long term, we, all our goal is to have more time at the beach and less time in you know, government regulation. So uh, Lucas asked, can an Estonian company invest in property in other places? What a very good question. <laughs> yes, yes, it can. Absolutely. Because uh, Estonia is, uh, first of all, it's part of EU and OECD. So it's all international uh, organizations. So the documentation you get uh, about your Estonian business is valid. You can also notary approve it and not still it. So if you make an investment that involves a lot of money into some property and you want to get like proof that this business actually in Estonia exists, you can get really valid documentation. So that's one thing that one office and Estonia can cover for you. Uh, but yeah, it's allowed. So uh, whatever is the uh, compliance that you have to do when investing or putting your money into that property, that's again, a local matter where you buy that property. Like sure. just tell us what uh, information you need about your business. We get that information, official information, and you get the hard copies of those documents and you can execute the paperwork in that country where you buy that property. Uh, but yeah, the experience rather shows that it's not the question about uh, buying that thing. It's like where to get the money to buy. <laughs> so if uh, you have the money, then you're already golden. So good luck. Wow. This is this is incredible. So we have very less time left on this. I know you committed with us half an hour. I will try to ask you. I wanted <laughs> to understand. Uh, so guys, if I would encourage, you know, there are few details which we don't know or your specific situation may not fall into the standard process. So that's where one office can help you, right? We already know Tan is the amazing English, very friendly guy. So mm -hmm. we can reach him out through visadb.io. You know, it helps uh, through visadb.io. You can chat, you can ask him. But I wanted to understand, Tones, what kind of services uh, do you offer? Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Uh, well, there are four main kinds of kinds of services. It's company formation, then local address. We call it virtual office. Then it's accounting, and then it's legal services. And uh -huh. among those four things, you basically get everything. I mean, with company formation, you get the business in Estonia. With the address, you get the actual address. Uh, you get the, the post management. You get the free knowledge base. All that kind of thing that is revolved around the address. With accounting, of course, you get uh, local compliance plus uh, documentation that your business has paid taxes, for example, or whatever is the case, like everything to make uh, your business trustworthy to your big partners or whoever. And then with legal services, you get uh, contracts. That's the main thing that we are asked about. Uh, trademark, uh, again, changes with your business, whatever it might be. You want to change the articles of your, uh, of your business. You want to change the company name. You want to include more investors on board, some new people, board members. That's, that's all uh, with the legal right. services. So that's, that's the four things, company, yeah. uh, legal services, virtual office, and then accounting. Sure. In short, I would say anything with Estonia. If you're not Estonian, one office is there to help you in terms of business, right? Anything and business service. Absolutely. Our motto is uh, making business simple. So we try to make it as uh, least uh, headachey as possible. Yeah. And Estonia just help, uh, helps us so much. 
So thank yeah. you, Estonia, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we will be we will be organizing. So guys, we will be organizing another session for kind of registering a company in the UK with Tonis in, in upcoming yeah. weeks. So that's where we can discuss and compare because one office is in multiple countries and we can talk about that. So two more questions I missed. Uh, Quickly, I will ask you. I'm sorry, Tonis. I know half an hour is over. But no, no, no. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm glad that you you've been so prepared, and then I like the answer. So go ahead, shoot. So awesome. So Robert is asking, what are the types of company options to register as an e-resident? Uh, can I see the question somewhere? Yeah, yeah. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. Okay. Uh, and what was the yeah. question? Sorry. Yeah. What are the types of company like you know sole oh, proprietor yeah, yeah. or corporate? Uh, so there are different types, of course, uh, but uh, we mainly focus on limited liability companies. Uh, so just um, the regular ones, which has at minimum, you have to have one shareholder and the same shareholder can also be the director or a board member. Uh, so this is the main one we focus on, but you can also register joint stock. Well, it already gets really complicated, but it's possible yeah. with the residency card. You can, and uh, another really popular thing that you uh, people want to do is non-profit. If uh, like, for example, there's so much going on in the world, a lot of people want to register non-profit. Uh, so that's also yeah. a possibility. And, okay. and another thing this question usually leads to is that, um, uh, is it sole proprietorship? Like, is that possible? I, I want to do everything alone. Like this is what freelancers usually want. And, and that's where we say that actually limited liability a uh, company in Estonia is the equivalent basically for sole proprietorship in many other countries. Legally, it's different, but uh, essentially in practice, it's the best, uh, best form of business to do because the tax system is simple, the structure is simple, you can keep it really minimal, minimum, you don't have to pay anything out of the company, you can just accumulate for years and years and years. It's, it's just the simplest structure in Estonia that you can imagine. Okay. So this is where we put our focus on. But others That's are amazing. Yeah, and also there is no liability, I guess, right? If somebody... Yeah, well, uh, you have the option to pay it in, uh, 2,500 euros, but essentially it doesn't mean much because uh, they're gonna change it anyway. They're gonna put it like zero euros eventually. Yeah. But when you open a company, you don't have to pay in any liability or anything like that. Uh -huh. Just, yeah, just part it, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the follow-on question from Ingrid is like, what about professional indemnity insurance? Is that a possibility as an e-resident? Uh, uh, I don't know much about the insurance. I mean, you have this uh, partner that you had. Uh, can you mention him again? I've seen him before. The partner that you... Tavi? I mean, the, the insurance that you advertised in the beginning. Oh, it's... yeah, safety way. Yeah, 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 yeah. safety way, exactly. Sorry. Uh, so yeah. the, I think what Ingrid is looking for this for insurance is bought on the company as an entity or as, as a person. Mm -hmm. That's that's the thing uh, that if you're a business, you have a legal entity, then you can yeah. apply for insurance. And there are partners out sure. there, even in Estonian marketplace, where you can get that. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, it's not usually that seeked for. And uh -huh. uh, I need to know more details about the person asking why it's needed. And only then I can maybe uh, answer about that. Okay, sounds good. I think yeah, and great. It's, 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 it's definitely you can get it. It's a, it's another product, so it's not not it's not related to e-residence. You can buy any product you want. It's, yeah. it's, it's not you're free to buy it. Uh, so guys, I would like to conclude as we are over time. But Tonis, what a great session! What a great energy you have! I really want to say thank you again on the behalf of. All the people you answered, I think many people uh, and everybody who's watching the replay, uh, please go to visadb.io, select experts, select Estonia, and you will see right now the, the services are not there, but it will be published in a few minutes. And then you can, you know, contact chat and you can chat with Tonis, uh, hire them, they're professionals, they've been doing business not only in Estonia, but many in other countries. And with that note, I also want to mention that we will be inviting Tonis again for the UK market, how to register a company in the United Kingdom. What are the tax things and what are the you know consequences of everything? So it's amazing. Please, That's amazing. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, so Tonis, uh, one last line, let's say if you wanna tell people why they should register business in Estonia or <laughs> using one office or I anything mean, you wanna. Even if I do these kind of presentations, I'm all about simplicity. The, Message has to be simple. Of course, I'm being asked complicated questions. You want to be simplistic. You want to do your business in a straight way. 
And I think yeah. Estonia provides all the tools to do that. Of course, mm -hmm. when we go on with it, each individual case, you can see some complexity within that as well. But the framework, it's straightforward. You want to open sure. a business, we open the business, you start invoicing, you have a bank account and so on. And it's really easy to manage online. It's quite uh, affordable and so on. So everything about Estonia is, yeah. is so simple that uh, some people just cannot believe that, that I'm just sure. speaking <laughs> chapters. No. It's not yeah. really that simple here. Yeah, I think, yeah. So, guys, please inquire more. Feel free. Estonia is marketing. They are marketing it for a reason to digital nomads. So, check them out. And if you're still not sure if you want to study other options, US and UK come to second and third close, which we will invite Tony to discuss in detail as well in coming, in coming mm -hmm. weeks. So, but today I want to thank Tony again, and I want to thank one office, of course, and also you, all of you who's watching and joining in today. So thank you very much. It's a new moon. Keep blessing everybody and see you next week. See ya. Bye-bye.